In today's lecture, we will see the IEEE 802.11, the distribution system. We will start the session with the outcomes. Upon the completion of this session, the learner will be able to Outcome number 1, recall the modes of Wi-Fi. Outcome number 2, we will know about the IEEE 802.11, the distribution system. Outcome number 3, we will know how access points are connected to distribution systems. And the last outcome is, we will understand what is active scanning and passive scanning. As mentioned, we will recall the modes of Wi-Fi. We have basically two modes of Wi-Fi. One is the infrastructure mode, the other one is the ad hoc mode. In the infrastructure mode, for example, if this is the client which wants access to any other device, it has to contact the access point in order to get connected with that device. There is always a fixed infrastructure here and the access point is the centralized system here. In ad hoc mode, there will not be any fixed infrastructure. For example, if one node is connected to one access point at this point of time, it need not be the case that that device should always be connected with that access point. We have the nodes which are mobile in nature. Whenever the node travels, it has to select the appropriate access points whichever is available at that moment. So, in ad hoc, there is no fixed infrastructure. Let's see the IEEE 802.1, the distribution system. We know 802.11 Wi-Fi is suitable for an ad hoc configuration of nodes that may or may not be able to communicate with all other nodes. So it need not be the case that every node should communicate with other nodes. It may communicate or it may not communicate. Why? Because the nodes are free to move around. It means there are mobile nodes. These mobile nodes need not be stationary. They can move around. For example, if this is the node A, Presently, it is connected with the access point AP1. This node can move around. It means this node, the user may take this mobile node and he can move around and he may be here at this point of time. In this case, A cannot be connected to access point 1 because the coverage range of access point is up to this. But, but A can get connected to access point 3. Nodes are free to move around and the set of directly reachable nodes may change over time. In this case, A and C are directly reachable through access point 1. When A moves to access point 3, A and C cannot directly access. So, previously they were directly connected, but now they are not directly connected. When we have a fixed infrastructure, the access point acts as the central unit. Whereas, when the mobile nodes are there, it means the nodes are moving from one place to another. We need to care about the mobility process. At the same time, if we talk about the node B, actually it is in the coverage range of access point 1 as well as access point 2. So which access point it will choose? So we are required to handle these kind of issues also. To deal with this mobility and partial connectivity, IEEE 802.11 defines additional structures on a set of nodes. So in IEEE 802.11, it need not be the case that all nodes are equal. So instead of all nodes being created equal, some nodes are allowed to roam and some are connected to the wired network infrastructure. They are called access points. And these access points are connected to each other by a so-called distribution system. Let us take the diagram. In this example, we say this nodes A, B, C, D, H, G, E, F, they are nodes that can move around. It means they are mobile nodes. Whereas access point 1, access point 2 and access point 3 are fixed and they are connected to the background distribution system with the help of a wired network infrastructure. So at the background we will be having a wired infrastructure and these mobile nodes are wireless nodes. So they can move around but these access points are connected to a so called the distribution system. And that is what is mentioned. Some nodes are allowed to roam and some are connected to the wired network infrastructure. And they are called as the access points. And these access points are connected to each other by a so-called distribution system. Let's now see how access points are connected to the distribution system. This figure illustrates a distribution system that connects three access points, each of which services the nodes in the same region. It means we have three access points here, access point 1, access point 2 and access point 3. All these access points are connected through this distribution system. And we also have access point 1 which caters mobile nodes A, C and B. Similarly, access point B can cater B, H and D. Access point 3 can cater G, E and F. So access points are catering the nodes in their regions. Each of these regions is analogous to a cell in a cellular phone system. 
with the APIs playing the same role as a base station. So if we can take the cellular phone as an example, wherever we go, we can take our cell phone with us. Presently, our mobile phone will be connected to one cell phone tower. Wherever we go, it need not be the case that our mobile phone should always be connected to that cell phone tower. Wherever we find a better signal strength than the previous one, our cell phone will always get connected to the cell phone tower which gives good signal strength. And in what layer this distribution system runs? Obviously, this distribution network runs at the layer 2 of the OSA architecture. We will see more about access points connected to a distribution network. Although two nodes can communicate directly with each other, if they are within the range of each other, the idea behind this configuration is, it means, suppose if A and C wants to communicate, they are in the same region, so they can communicate with each other either directly or with the help of access points. So each node associates itself with one access point. So we don't encourage A and C are directly communicating with each other because if A and C directly communicates with each other, then it becomes a personal area network. We are talking about a distribution network which involves the access point. So each node associates itself with one access point. If in this case, suppose if A wants to communicate with C, so A has to associate itself with one of the access points. Since A can access only access point 1, so A is associating itself with access point 1. For node A to communicate with node E, in this example, node A is in the coverage area of access point 1, whereas node E is in the coverage area of access point 3. So for node A to communicate with node E, A first sends a frame to its access point 1, that is A first sends its associated access point. A's associated access point is access point 1. Now this access point will take the data or the frame and it takes the frame across the distribution network and finally it hands over the data or the frame to access point 3. And finally the access point 3 forwards the data or transmits the data frame to node E. And this is how the access points are connected to the distribution network. How node A connects to access point 1? It means how nodes are connected to access points. Let's see it now. How does the node select their access points? The process is very interesting. The technique for selecting an access point is called scanning. Suppose if A is selecting AP1 as its access point, this process is called a scanning. How it is done? The node sends a probe frame. For example, node A first sends the probe frame. Which access points and all will receive this probe frame? In this case, AP1 alone will receive because AP1 alone is having an access point in this range. When B sends a probe frame, B can send the probe frames to access point 1 as well as access point 2. So basically, node sends a probe frame. After probe frames are sent, all access points within reach reply with a probe response frame. As far as A is concerned, A will get a probe response frame only from access point 1. Whereas B will get a probe response frame from access point 1 as well as from access point 2. What are the steps? Node first sends a probe frame and then access points reply with a probe response frame. Then what happens? The node selects one of the access points and sends the access point and association request frame. If AP1 sends a probe response frame, now A is having only one option. So what A does? It selects this access point. After selecting this access point, it has to intimate that access point that it has selected this as the access point. So what it will do? It will send an association request frame. In this case, if B gets two probe response frames, that is from AP1 as well as from AP2, B will select only one access point. So what it will do, it will send the association request frame to only one access point based on the quality and other parameters. We will see how B selects which access point is good for it. And finally, this access point replies with an association response frame. After a node selects that this is the access point it wants to associate with, after sending an association request frame, now it replies with the association response frame. Now let's recollect what are the steps. First, a node sends a probe frame and the access points, all the access points in the coverage area will reply with the probe response frame. Step number one is probe frame and we will get probe response frame from the access points. Then the node will select one of the access points. So it wants to associate with only one access point. So it will send an association request frame and that will be acknowledged by the access point with an association response frame. 
and this is how the nodes select their access point and this process is called as scanning. We will see more about this. In this case, a node engages this protocol whenever it joins the network. So whenever it joins the network, it uses the scanning process in order to join the network. Now when it becomes unhappy with its current access point, what is unhappy here? For example, this A is moving here, it is moving here, it is close to access point 2 and it is far from access point 1. Actually A is now moving and it sees a good signal strength from access point 2 when compared with access point 1. This situation we call as unhappy. So when a node is becoming unhappy with its current access point, this might happen for example because the signal from its current access point has weakened due to the node moving away from it. If the node moves away from access point, it is close to access point 2, it gets a weaker signal from access point 1 and stronger signal from access point 2. So what it has to do? It has to select access point 2 as its access point. So whenever a node acquires a new access point, the new access point notifies the old access point of the change via the distribution system. So let's assume A is now moving here and A is now getting a better signal from access point 2 than access point 1. So now A wants to associate itself with access point 2. So the entire scanning process takes place in this case. A sends a probe frame and access point 2 replies and A sends the association request frame and the access point will reply with the association response frame. What AP2 will do? AP2 will notify AP1 that A is now presently associated with AP2. So that is what is mentioned. Whenever a node requires a new access point, the new access point notifies the old access point of the change via the distribution system. So we know the nodes are going to be mobile here and the access points are stationary. We will talk about the node mobility. Presently node C is associated with access point 1. Now let's assume that node C is moving towards access point 2. So it is obviously going to lose access point 1. How this is handled? Consider the situation shown in the following figure when node C moves from the cell serviced by access point 1 to the cell serviced by access point 2. So that is C is now moving from the cell. This is the cell which is serviced by access point 1 to the cell which is to be accessed by access point 2. How this node mobility is handled? As it moves, it sends probe frames which eventually result in probe response from access point 2. When C is now here, when it sends a probe frame, access point 2 alone is there in the cell area. So access point 2 will reply with the probe response frame. So C will get the probe response frame only from access point 2. Now C associates itself with access point 2 and it loses access point 1 and this is called active scanning since node is actively searching for an access point. When node is actively searching for an access point then this process is called as active scanning. Now let's see what is passive scanning. In passive scanning access points also periodically send a beacon frame that advertises the capabilities of the access point. These include the transmission rate supported by the access point. So previously we saw the nodes which were searching for the access point. Let's now think different. Access points are now going to advertise themselves to the nodes so that nodes can choose the better access points. Say for example, the node B will obviously getting the beacon frames from access point 1 as well as from access point 2. So because B is in the coverage range area of access point 1 as well as from access point 2. We will get two beacon frames. Which access point it will choose? It will choose the better access point because the beacon frames that are advertised by the access points, they include the transmission rate supported by the access points. If B finds access point 2 is having a better transmission rate than access point 1, then B will associate itself with access point 2. And this is called as passive scanning. So if node searches for an access point, it is active scanning. If access points advertises themselves using a beacon frame to the nodes, then this is called passive scanning. So a node can change this access point based on the beacon frame simply by sending it an associate request frame back to the access point. We have already seen this. And that's it guys. We recall the modes of Wi-Fi. We know the IEEE 802.11 distribution system. We also know how access points are connected to distribution systems. We finally understood what is active scanning and passive scanning. I hope you enjoyed the session and thank you for watching.